Hi, my name's Helen Francis. I'm, can you hear me fine? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, good, thanks. Uh, I manage the Manarts Biobank, which stands for Manchester Allergy, Respiratory and Thoracic Surgery Biobank. We're based at the Northwest Lung Centre at Within Shaw House Hospital, which is part of the Manchester University Foundation Trust, or MFT. We were established um, in 2011, and we used to be called ManRab, um, but when we started collecting resected lung tissue, we were asked by the thoracic surgeons to change the name to include thoracic surgery, which is what we did. So the Northwest Lung Centre is a regional centre for respiratory disease. The unit sees patients with rare diseases, as well as those with common but complex diseases. Patients attending the clinic have numerous investigations performed as part of their clinical assessment. So there's a lot of information in the case notes, but it isn't accessible to research. We therefore set up a research tissue bank to capitalize on the clinical resource available in the Res regional respiratory center. Um, our aim is to facilitate high quality research that's compliant with all ethical and regulatory standards, including the Human Tissue Act. We were originally supported by the Respiratory and Allergy Clinical Research Facility, um, but we're now self-funded. In order to build up our sample collection, we've recruited patients opportunistically when they come to clinic. We covered originally allergy, cough clinic and fungal lung disease, and then we expanded to cover other disease areas. In the start, we recruited as many patients as possible that came through the clinics but we've moved to a more targeted approach now, focusing on areas that are research active. And during the pandemic, we've also added in acute respiratory infections so that we can recruit patients with COVID-19. A number of people have worked on the biobank in various roles since it was established. And this is the current list of staff. Professor Angela Simpson is our chief investigator. We have a laboratory manager and a database manager, and Jenny Hankinson coordinates the resected lung tissue. Uh, our full-time recruiter post is vacant at the moment, but there's various researchers who are supporting recruitment, um, including staff from our RNI department and from the Manchester Research Clinical Research Facility. Um, and Simon Steffen's lab team and Jay Brown's lab team are, are supporting the processing of the COVID samples. At the moment, we've been mainly concentrating on the COVID sample processing just because um, things have been very different in terms of patients coming into clinic at the moment, as you can probably appreciate. So in terms of the samples that we collect, we routinely collect blood from patients, but here's a list of the other sample types that we do collect. We've had a number of studies recently, for instance, that have needed sputum or bowel. We've also had access to resected lung tissue since 2015. In normal years, over 100, 600, sorry, um, surgeries are performed at Within Shore Hospital um, to, for lung resection, and that's the highest number nationally. Staff from the Manchester Cancer Research Centre recruit the patients using a joint consent form, an MCRC biobank have the cancerous tissue, and we take the non-cancerous tissue. Most resected lung tissue samples are used fresh, and they're predominantly used by staff at MCCIR at the University of Manchester and the airway pharmacology team at Withinshaw. And as said before, um, Jenny Hankinson coordinates this. So in terms of recruitment, most patients we recruit opportunistically during a clinic visit. We try and collect blood samples for the biobank at the same time as any clinical samples are taken. We have multiple aliquots of serum and plasma, so there's a huge number of samples available. We can also do targeted recruitment for particular projects, especially for research that needs fresh samples. Um, Sputum is a good example of this. The resected lung tissue is generally used in real time to extract immune cells and fibroblasts. So in terms of clinical data, we have a bespoke database, which is specific to each disease area. And a lot of discussion took place with the PIs for each disease area to decide on what clinical data to capture. The data for the database is mainly the results of tests done for clinical purposes, and it's entered by Manart staff and is taken from hospital case notes and electronic systems. This is an example of just one of the pages, which is blood test results, just to give you a feel for the huge amount of data that is available. We have something called generic ethics approval, which means that our steering committee can give ethical approval to projects providing they meet the objectives of the tissue bank. 
This means that they don't have to put in a full application to ethics or apply for HR, HRA or RNI approval, which is very time consuming. We accept applications from researchers from the University of Manchester and MFT. We also accept applications from other academic institutions and commercial companies. Once we'd built up a collection of samples, we started to receive applications and we would prove about 10 a year. We've approved 98 since February 2012. Most of the applications are for large grant funded projects, but some are used to generate pilot data for subsequent work. We've also been able to facilitate medical student, clinical fellow and PhD projects. And Manart samples have also enabled researchers to get approval to foundation pro for foundation program projects. We were also able to contribute to a large national high impact study due to the large number of samples that we have. As we're now unfunded, we operate a cost recovery system. I can provide costs for grant applications, which would be tailored to the samples that are required. Just need to drop me an email um, and tell me what you need. Um, we provide samples at a discounted rate to researchers from the University of Manchester and MFT. The costs that we have include identifying, recruiting and consenting patients, which is inherently inefficient and very time consuming. It also includes the entry of clinical data, consumables and any processing that might be needed prior to storage. We also have to add on trust overheads and for commercial companies, the trust will automatically add VAT. So say you wanted to apply for samples uh, and data, what would you have to do? We have an application um, review process that's done by our steering committee. An application form has to be completed. It's fairly concise. It's about eight pages long and includes questions about what you want to do and what samples and accompanying data you require. If a peer review hasn't been done already as part of a grant application, then we can arrange for one to be done. And lastly, a material transfer agreement has to be fully signed before any samples can be released for analysis. Um, last point to make is that I've included my email address here. So if you want any further information or you want to apply for any samples, then um, that's the email address to send the request to. Thanks very much for your time.